Hello y'all, this is Kaiser Redux, a Hearts of Iron 4 mod that acts as an unofficial standalone expansion for Kaiserreich. Kaiserreich itself is a mod set in a world where the central powers were victorious in World War I. With that introduction finished, this video is going to act as part one for a playthrough series centered around the Legionary Order path for the French National State. Here's some brief history on the French National State. Following the French Revolution of 1919, the discredited parliamentary government, having evacuated Algiers, was rapidly toppled by Ferdinand Folk, who consolidated his military junta until his death in 1929. His successor, Philippe Pétain, has so far taken a more conciliatory attitude to the forces of democracy, reconciling with, li with liberal conservatives and delegating some power to the assembly. However, Patan's simultaneous ties to the deeply Catholic and nationalist Croix de Fou and the increasing discontent with parliamentary power within the military is sure to cause trouble as the national French prepare to take back their homeland. We have started, let's go to our national overview and then we can see that we have three national spirits, and they are anti communard uh, something that translates to Code of the Indignate, I believe, and Simmering Discontent. Besides that, the ruling ideology of the country is authoritarian democracy of the military junta variety. And moving on, research slots available. Let's do basic machine tools, just the essentials. We need the essential techs, well, technology, construction one, just general opening stuff you do whenever you play Hearts of Iron 4. That applies here too in Kaiser Redux. Free civilian factories, yeah, free civilian factories, like seven of them. Build some in Algiers and Oran. And you can see the military here, 13 divisions, two fleets, and two air wings. National focus not set. Let's, I don't think we can do anything just yet. Or, or wait, we can't. Let's do prepare for deliberation. Complete that now. And that will take some time. I'm not going to bother to read this focus description for... Well, I'm not going to bother with it. I know I'm going to probably have to spend some amount of time reading events in this video. So I'm just trying to keep everything brief in many cases. So prepare for deliberation. Get 15 army experience, 25 command power, 100% cost reduction. Well, 100% cost reduction for land doctrine. And we'll get an event called the Bitter Truth. So that will take 42 days. And that is, oh, I can change the leader's outfit. I can do that. That is a thing, that is a thing you can do. You can change, there is a portrait picker for Philippe Patton, who is leading this country, which is crazy. That is a very interesting feature. Just, I wouldn't, I would not have expected that to be there. And now we have tons of generals, plenty of field marshal, well, plenty of generals at the very least, and a couple field marshals. So let's get these units set up. We have Corsica under our control. I guess the Commune of France doesn't have that. Oh, we have some camel camel units. That's cool. And here's some units in West Africa. They're garrison troops, essentially. Keep them where they are. Give them, like, the most basic commander we have who can be, who can stay there. Get Pierre Delong here. He's, a, he's just going to do garrison duty. Just defend French West Africa for us. Defend the ports. That's all I gotta do. Any more garrison troops I have to be aware of? We have some in Algiers and Tunis and Corsica. So, I, yeah, we need to probably defend those areas also. Corsica especially, because that is vulnerable to naval invasion. Since it's obviously an island, we can't lose Corsica because it's very close to... It's very nearby the Commune of France. It also... What else can I say there? It is in a different sea region. Well, it's connected to the Tyrrhenian Sea sea region. So it could be of some potential in the event of a naval invasion attempt. And where's our navy? Bring our navy together, 65 ships, tons, well, quite a few powerful ships there. Battleships, I believe, as well as, what are these here? The, oh, well, we, we have battle cruisers, which is what these are, these Puteau-class ships. And let me get a commander. Get Francois Baron. We have quite a few admirals. I'm going to merge all of our fleets together. Get this one in Western Africa. Send them up to Tunis, just merge everything at Tunis. No divisions and basic training, let's change that. Get a 
What's our most used division here? Four divisions. I mean, yeah, let's just at least try to expand our military. Or what's bigger? This is... Okay, so let's make this instead. I don't want to have to make tank divisions. This should work, hopefully. How are we doing with equipment? Way too much. That's not... That's. I don't want to have to make that many. I don't have enough equipment for all that. We have tons of resources we got to get now. Get some tungsten. We have some stuff already in our production queue, which is fine. But it's just something I think I should point out. As we can see here, we are producing rifles, infantry equipment one, towed artillery, support, equip support equipment, motorized interwar armored cars, fighters, tactical bombers, and naval bombers, as well as a Nantes class cruiser. Besides that, insufficient resources. Oh yeah, I hope they are fine with our trade. We are dealing with occupation with some resistance in Chad and parts of, I believe, let me see here, dealing with resistance in West Africa. Basically, because we don't have cores on these places in West Africa. So that is a bit of a problem. But we do have, I think, cavalry as our, yeah, our cavalry colonial division is being used as a template for the resistance, resist, well, occupation force there. And I'm going to unpause at this point because we do have some events probably and some background events to read. And there we are, like I said. The situation of the French Republic. Slat, well, dot, well, not, what am I saying? History. The situation of the French Republic. History. The Third Republic fell in the same way it came to be, in defeat by German arms and facing socialist unrest. As the civil war that followed the Communist Revolution of 1920 eventually came to a close, the government chose exile instead of surrender. Having retreated the Marcels, they embarked with the French Navy toward Algiers, hoping that this temporary situation would be resolved as the newly created Federation of Communes of France's Communes of France would undoubtedly either quickly collapse on itself or be put down by the Boches, which I guess is a term for Germans, I don't know. Or I, I have no clue what that means. Neither happened and instead a peace treaty was concluded concluded between the German Empire and the Commune with little to no regard towards the exiled government. The Commune was recognized as, a, as the successor of the French Republic by most of the newly German-aligned world, while the exiles remained seen as the legitimate government by those who had fought beside them in the Weltkrieg. But the refugees refused to be cowed. They renewed their claim as the legitimate government of all of France and her empire and their commitment to the Entente, preparing for any opportunity to strike. However, the aftermath of the exile proved highly unstable, with the remnants of the parliament and mainstream political parties thrown into chaos by the defeat and exile. The great commander, Ferdinand Folk, seized control in a bloodless putsch, ruling at the head of a thinly veiled junta until his death in 1929. So that is, we're playing in 1936, so that's only, say, seven years ago, I believe. His shoes were filled with ease by his fellow war hero, Philippe Paton. The Lion of Verdun. Quite the title there. Patan's rule has so far been perceived as less autocratic than his predecessors, with the Marchiel willing to delegate to the assembly and civilian politicians when needs be, and choosing to cooperate with the parties of the center right, as well as the corporatist Croix de Fou. Nonetheless, he alone is the leader of France, and the constitution remains suspended and ignored, with the military continuing to dominate both politics and the economy and parliament often sidelined. However, however Patan's premier, General Maurice Jonon, has a less than admir admirable record of, record of incompetence, and his many blunders may soon catch up with him and his government. So that's one... Oh, great, we have another event. The situation of the French Republic. Political situation. The circumstances of the revolution and exile have convinced March of Patan and a large portion, well, a large proportion of the population that only a dynamic and authoritarian rule can save France, at least until Metropole is, the Metropole is liberated, which, okay. Have, however, both far-right loyalists and liberals are increasingly dissatisfied with the regime and are slowly becoming restless for change. This is not helped by the perceived incompetence of the Premier, Maurice Janon Janin, who has already endangered the government with his blunders before and may well do so again. Even Bataan's allies in the Croix de Fou, the Cross of Fire, I think that's what that translates to, and the FR are starting to grow impatient with the 
political stagnation and De La Rue's corporatists are increasingly hindered by internal factionism, internal, let me say, internal factionalism, making them hardly the ally they once were. To put it simply, the junta is slowly but surely losing political credibility and is now mainly held together by the prestige of Baton. The junta did, however, make several attempts to reassert its power, such as temporarily renaming the French Republic to the French national state. The notion of the quote, state, unquote, uh, affirming the temporary suspension of full democracy, and that of quote, national, unquote, asserting itself as the only state truly representing the French people, as opposed to the universalist and international character of the Camillard, Camillard government. And we can trust the line. It says here we have another event. The situation of the French Republic. Growing, growing concerns. As if this lack of civilian support wasn't enough, trust in the Marshal is starting to erode within the, arm, within the army, the backbone of the regime. Baton's favoritism toward his protégés has put many in key positions, and though they certainly are competent, many officers are left behind, while others worry that this could encourage doctrinal rot, that Baton is surrounding himself with yes-men. Increasingly, debate is flaring, up, is flaring up within his clique between General de Gaulle and Admiral Darlon, whose proposals for deliberation are starkly different over how the military should prepare to free the metropole. The most important problem facing the nation, however, is simply its situation in exile. Though in Algeria, officially annexed as part of France as an overseas department in the late 19th century, exiles in Pied Nord's settlers make up a significant portion, will make up a significant part of the population. In some major cities, even making up a majority. Overall, Europeans are still a small minority, ruling over millions of indigenous, indigenous people, I suppose, who despite being considered Frenchmen are essentially second-class citizens, subject to heavy taxes and forced labor. With rule from Algiers enforced by native elites in the army, since the defeat in the Velkrieg, the colonial structure is more, it is precarious, and unrest is really, unrest is ruthlessly put down. Recent famines were badly managed. Syndicalist and pan-Arab agents spread propaganda against colonial authorities. However, most traditional indigenous elites are still loyal to France, and there exists a growing class of French-educated natives and native war veterans who, despite wanting reform, remain loyal. But one thing is clear. If the government is careless, further unrest and perhaps even revolts are bound to happen. Be careful. A failure to keep the resistance in non-core African states under 60 will result in revolts. I'm sure it's going to be fine. So it's very critical that we keep a close eye on the, the amount of resistance there is in many parts of Africa, like Senegambia, Sierra Leone, Masilan, Mauritania, and Mali, and Guinea. Great, we need more troops. Focus everything on resistance. I mean, not resistance. Focus everything on garrisons. Prioritize garrisons. They need everything. Give it all to them. Yes, give them all the manpower, give them all the troops. And I guess they're taking fuel as well? That's the Navy moving around, what am I saying? Assassination of the Russian president. That has occurred. Okay. Now, we gotta prepare for the liberation. It will take 42 days to complete, so that's something. Darnon breaks with the Croix de Fieu. Francois Francis de la Roux, Catholic corporatist Croix de Fieu, a major ally of the Junta and the Assembly, today suffered a significant setback. The party has long been has long been a broad tent coalition, united mainly by de la Roux's own charisma and by a shared distrust for liberal democracy. However, the tensions caused by this have clearly reached a boiling point, with some of the party's hardliners under Joseph Darnon splitting off entirely to form a new Chevrolet. Che Chevaliers du Glave, du Glave party, claiming inspiration from the legionnaires in Romania, I think they're referring to the Iron Guard, and seeking to defend French racial purity, oh boy, and restore French power in Europe. Danon has notably proclaimed his absolute loyalty to the Bataan government in what we can only assume is a ploy for influence in the junta. Nevertheless, Danon's group remains on the extreme fringe, and his radicalism is, re is regarded with suspicion suspicion by much of the population. While Bataan's allies in the junta have no interest in working with him, if anything, his split from the Croix de Fieu 
has harmed De La Rooks through, expo well, through exposing the divisions in his own party more than it has helped Don Non. And we can safely ignore him, well, safely ignore this lunatic, and popularity of paternal autocracy will go down. Meanwhile, the popularity of national populism will go up by 1%. And that is Joseph Darnon. And he is the leader, I will say this now, he is the leader, well, the guy we got to get in power to do the Legionary Order path. It's effectively referred, well, I refer to it as the Legionary Order path, even though his party isn't exactly called that. The group he, the group he leads, the Totalist Charter. Okay. Resist, release, friendship, well, boy, what is this all about? Oh, that's the death of King George V. He's leader of Canada. I forgot to mention this, but the French national state is a member of the Entente faction, which consists of several countries. I'll go, I'll go over that in a second. And anyway, Louis, Franchette, the Esprit retires. Poison news has struck the nation today. As Marshal Louis Franchette, the Esprit hero of the Great War and Bataan's long-standing chief of staff, has gone into retirement. The Esprit is an old man now and clearly feels unable to lead men in war. As successfully as, as successfully as he did 20 years ago, and so few can blame him for stepping back. Nevertheless, Patan's government has lost a vital political ally and a popular figure capable of rounding up support for the junta. Furthermore, without the unifying figure of the Osprey, debates in the military are likely to come to the surface as Patan will be forced to choose a new chief of staff. Farewell to a new patriot, and we lose him as a member of government. And like I was saying earlier, prior to that, well, while whilst I was reading that event, we are a member of the Entente, which consists of the Kingdom of Canada, who leads it, South Rhodesia, the, the Dominion of Delhi, the Australasian Confederation, the Union of South Africa, the West Indies Federation, and the country we are playing as, the French National State. And their big thing is, as a whole, well, the Kingdom of Canada and the French National State's big thing is, is trying to Oh great, I gotta read this now, the line in Canada. Something about this. Something about Canada. Now, I'm trying not to read absolutely every every event because I'm trying to get through, I mean, it's just gonna take up time, I know that much, but if you wanna pause and look at them, it's fine. That, that would be ideal, I guess, if you wanna do that. But anyway, oh no, now I gotta read this. I don't mind reading them, but it's just words. A successor to the hospitality over a week has now passed since Louis French at the Osprey retired, and Baton has still held back on announcing a successor. This is because the Osprey's retirement has robbed the military of a unified and respected figure, capable of papering over the growing doctrinal divides. As a younger generation of officers seek to find solutions to the military's decline, uh, to the military's decline. On one side, General Charles de Gaulle and his allies are known for their conviction that the nation can, in its current circumstances, only sustain a relatively small army, and thus should focus on professionalism and a high quality of training and equipment. Furthermore, de Gaulle is passionate in his, in his belief that tanks are a future of warfare and that the army should develop elite armored units which can achieve concentrated rapid breakthroughs. Opposing de Gaulle's faction is a group of officers centered around Admiral Francois Francis Dallon and General Maxime Regan. Regan who follow a more traditional approach that is often more popular among the older generation of officers. Drawing on the traditional French ideal of the citizen soldier and the need for strong naval and air power in order to land in the metropole, they argue for as large as an army as circumstances allow, alongside a greatly strengthened navy and air force, with the three forces acting in greater coordination. By now, however, the pressure from both factions of the military, from civilian politicians, Eager to, say, eager to see the military reform one way or another, and from public opinion, has grown too strong for Breton to procrastinate with any longer, and he must appoint a successor. So let's go with Delon. Darlon and Regan will preserve our military traditions. That is done now, and now we have a new chief of staff. That is, yeah, Francis Daron. He is the, well, he is part of the School of Psychology. We have higher division organization, higher division recovery rate, which isn't too bad. The reason why I went with Darlon instead of Charles de Gaulle is because, honestly, the French national state does not have the capacity... Oh, no. And Afghanistan declared war and the Dominion of Delhi, our ally. But anyway, before I read this event, I just wanted to say, I don't think the French national state has the capacity to really make huge, concentrated amounts of armor. Like, we don't have the resources for that right now. So I'm thinking big, building up as big of an army as possible 
will be a better plan. But anyway, rumor of Modoc's imminent demise. Jean Jules Henry Modoc has long served, at, long served the armed forces of France, but as the political stage of our exile regime begins to change its main players, as the winds of change blow across our Saharan home, Mordok has begun to fear for his own life. Rumors have spread that his enemies within the radical right, within, within France's left, or that even Algerian natives seek to gut this wounded old man, lest he interfere with the coming shift. Coming shift, and so Mordok has begun to look for options. General Jacques Massot and Armand Houdin, whatever, I can't read his name, both old allies and confidants of Mordok now work with the work within the Belgian German Congo Free State and could provide a safe haven for him should he flee. However, the dark heart of the dark continent is fraught with danger and filled and filled with heart and disease with death and disease, especially to outsider colonials who know little of how to live in such a foreign land. And some believe that the German colonial system in Africa is looming towards collapse. Luckily Mordok has some experience having survived surviving in Africa due to his time serving in Algeria, both during the 1880s and again during the rise of the Commune in Paris. But the sand dunes of Algeria are a far different beast to tame than the dangerous jungle Eden, jungle Eden of the Congo. However, it is not certain that he is in any real danger, for it could just be the paranoia of old age setting in. And the rumors could be entirely false, but the truth is uncertain. What should the aging general do? Do in this trying time. What could possibly go wrong? No one would ever harm Murdoch. He'll be fine. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. The Fourth Anglo-Afghan War has happened, so did the Berlin stock market crash, and I guess we'll send some help to the Dominion of Delhi. Yeah, let's go over to, to Afghanistan. They want us to join anyway, so Black Monday has occurred at some economic crash. Yeah, we'll have to help out the... We can't fight on the whole front. We'll fight near... Karachi, Karachi here, focus there with the army of France. And hey, let me get a field marshal. I need to do that. Do that now. Whoops, different thing. Field marshal, where are they at? We have one, okay, we have Philippe Paton. That would do fine. Get this unit to army group one, even though they're just garrison troops. And so, let's have, I don't know. Whatever, we'll get military EXP from this. And there's electoral gridlock in the, oh no. There was an electoral gridlock in the Commune of France, but anyway. Shocking news has reached a nation today. Last night, the retired general, Henry Murdoch, was found dead in the Caspa, having been stabbed repeatedly, repeatedly, and left to bleed out in the gutter. That's pretty brutal. Murdoch has left a glittering career in the Great War. I think Murdoch plays a bigger role in Kaiser Reich's French national state, but in Kaiser Redux, he kind of dies as he does here, so I'm just saying that I believe that's how that works. How just some just a comparison between Kaiser Reich and Kaiser Redux. But anyway, Murdoch has had a glittering career in the Great War, successfully holding the town of Arras against the Germans in 1914, and becoming deeply influential in the Comenso government. Is that the Rom a Romanian leader? It sounds vaguely familiar, like someone named like that. Anyway, however, he became far too indebted, indebted to the Tiger for his own good, and with the fall of the Comenso government amid, amidst the revolution in Volkskoll, his political career collapsed. His military career soon followed, with the general staff increasingly weary of his unorthodox ideas. Nonetheless, by the time of his death, he had become a prolific writer, and his fierce defense of Clemenceau had made him a prominent figure among liberals. I don't know who Clemenceau is, I just don't know who that is. He probably isn't Romanian. I mean, this is a French military officer after all, so that would be pretty, I don't know, odd? I don't know. Anyway. Already, the right-wing press, notably the Croix de Fou, the Lime Paper, Le Flambeau, and of course the Action Francais, 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 uh, whatever, are pointing the finger at natives, socialists, and other people, and everything in between. Notably, this cause has been taken up by Joseph Darnon, and this is the first major scandal to have broken out since he split from Croix de Fou, and he clearly wants to make a success of it, calling it harsh and clear terms for a crackdown on Algerian nationalists, so Joseph Darnon wants a crackdown on Algerians. Well, nationalists, anyway. Many in the Bataan government, even if they lack the same hysteria, are also now calling for an investigation, focusing on, focused on Arab organizations in the Kasbah and possible socialist influence. 
socialist infiltration, arguing, arguing simply and persuasively that these groups were likely behind the old general's death. However, some are arguing that we don't that we can't point the finger at any specific group yet, and a much broader broader investigation is needed. Is needed. Gentleman's cabinet has so far been unable to reach a decision, and the premier himself seems dangerously indifferent. As such, the matter has reached Patan himself, who must now come to a decision. And let's investigate the Arabs. That's the choice we're going to make there. And so that's happening now. And how are these guys doing with Army 1? they got to make their way over to India. A bitter truth. Basically, a military is not that good. I think this, this is what this event says. And from this event, we'll lose 35 political power, minus 2 base stability, and we'll get some event. Uh, from our premier or president, whatever. Jean-Lon, who is the... The, what is it? The guy who is the head of government. Yeah. Now in focus tree, I mean in the research tree, yeah, focus tree, do the Darlon plan, and that's the path we're going to be locked into as far as reforming the army goes, and ultimately in the long term our plan is just reform the military. How is occupation doing? Occupation is, it could be better. Icelandic independence, martial rule part thing, back someone. How is occupation? Oh no, Janon's plan. It says here, what is this about now? I don't know, something about, I can't skim through this fast enough. Whatever, he'll be able to handle everything, maybe. Push through the military spinning that is needed to get the army into a fit state for liberation. Okay. Now, the culprits. This is probably about Mordok's assassination, I guess. After weeks of investigation, loyally aided by the numerous white citizens who were present in the Casba at the Casbah at the time, it has been made clear beyond much doubt that Algerian, nas Algerian nationalists were at fault for Mordok's murder. Although a specific murderer, murderer has not yet been found, and those we have rounded up have proved notably resilient under interrogation, it is clear to all involved that the cells of the cells of the socialist and an, uh, what am I saying? and Algerian nationalists ENA ENA and its associated groups were responsible. As such, the government has resolved to order a new crackdown on nationalism and native groups across Algeria and the West African colonies, lest this happen again. Meanwhile, Joseph Danon, whose own nep nephew aided the police during the, during the investigation, has emerged from his first major political test stronger than ever. And from this event, we'll get some resistance to go down in a few states we control, and we'll also lose 3% base stability, so that is pretty... I mean, I don't know. I would prefer not the lost stability, but it's just something we had to deal with. And how is the first army doing? Have they arrived yet? No, they have not. I don't want to give them Lindley's either. The Dominion of Delhi. I will help them in the war, but I won't give them Lindley's. I gotta get over to India first. Let's join the war now. And what does this say? Oh, mid. Ah, oh, crud. I know what I just said. Great. Whatever. The scandal breaks. A new, a new set surprised a few in the know. Janon's corruption has today been exposed in all its sordid detail. Elaborate bribes, disturbing threats, even promises to turn a blind eye to blatantly illegal activity in exchange for support. All have been common practices of the Janon government and all have intensified recently as Janon makes a belated effort to strengthen his hand. Everyone from the staunch liberal Camille Chotoms to Charles Maras and Joseph Darnon have harshly rebuked not only Janon but Patan himself, and although Janan's own fall from power is now a certainly certainty, some even speculate that the junta itself is on the way out. And what does this say here? The White Fathers. Critical to the stability of the regime, the Society of the Missionaries of Africa is a Catholic society. Is this like a flavor event? We'll get some base stability from it, so I'll read the rest of it. This is the Society of the Missionaries of Africa is a Catholic society of apostolic life focusing on evangelism and education in Africa. Founded in 1868 in Algiers, they quickly became an integral integral part of colonial society. I meant to say integral instead of integral. Whatever. Integral part of colonial society. Adopting, adapting the native customs, adapt, adopting the native dress, all in the while accomplishing, accomplishing a tremendous amount of ethno ethnographical and geographic research. They have been on the forefront of French, French initiatives on the continent, despite their sometimes strained relationship with an increasingly anti-clerical republic government. They have become staunch advocates 
supporting native populations, even accepting native priests, never hesitating to side with them against the, against the colonial authorities when needed, and generally acting as a bridge between the two, earning them the affectionate nickname of White Fathers. In the troubled times since the revolution, they have become downright crucial to maintaining French authority over what is left of the empire, working tirelessly to maintain a peace between colonists, exiles, and natives with the full support of the Marshall's conservative government. So we'll get two base stability from that. There's some stuff that tells you how the French national state kind of works and how we arrived at Delhi yet, I don't know. Janon's resignation. Today, the inevitable came to pass, and after two days spent locked away in his office, Maurice Janon gave a short and regretful speech in a jeering assembly, announcing his immediate resignation. It is clear that Baton himself had forced him out, threatening that if he didn't go quietly, he would lose not only his rank in the army, but his liberty as well. And thus fell the Janon regime, ineffectual and shambolic to the end. Baton's next move as he attempts to stabilize the situation is for now unknown, but members of the Croix de Fuel, FR, and even the AF have been meeting with representatives of the junta. What lies next? And Maurice Janon, Janon is gone as the head of government for the French national state as a result of this event. With our head of government gone, a door has opened up for some people to step into it, so to speak, and restoration of democracy in Australasia. There's some war in the Northern Caucasus. Have we joined the war yet? Are we involved technically? I think we are. We're going to help out the Dominion of Delhi here. Our next move, oh boy. Ever since John Owen res resigned, the Republic has been without any prime minister, and the junta has been in chaos, with Bataan forced to take on the daily administrative responsibilities that he has grown used to delegating. Meanwhile, protests supported by everyone, from liberals to legionnaires, are continuing in the streets, and we are running out of time to stabilize the situation. As such, two possibilities lie before Bataan. First, as is suggested by many, he should seek to gain the support of civilian politicians through more legitimate means than Janon had used. This would entail entering into discussions with either François de Rarouk, leader of the Croix de Fou, and darling of the far right, or Louis Maron, leader of the center-right Federation Republicaine. Either man would be able to use his political prestige and support to restore, well, support base to restore confidence in the regime, but would also demand ex would also demand extensive concessions in exchange for doing so, something which has inspired Baton loyalists to urge the marshal not to bother talking to any politicians. Civilian politics, they argue, is responsible for dragging France into the chaos it currently faces, and it is time for, the Baton, for Baton to fully secure the junta's position and bend the assembly to his will. The old marshal must choose a course of action, but he has little time. And now, let's choose to have a meeting with Dele Rook here, and we need nationalist backing, apparently, so meet with him. He's the leader of the Crow de Fuel, the Cross of Fire. I hope, I hope that's the right translation. Can we attack here now in Afghanistan? Well, we're helping out with the Dominion of Delhi, helping them fight Afghanistan, get ready to go. We need military XP, that's why we're in this conflict. Go now. And what's this about? Oh, it's a Muslim holiday, I believe. We get some five political power for that. Really appreciate it. We're in negative political power, by the way. Now let's do a large army, and this will give us a national spirit. We'll modify the Darland Plan national spirit and give us 5,000 manpower. I would read the focus, but I'm probably going to have to read some events pretty soon. And there's only so much time in a video. A meeting with the colonel. As, faith, as faithfully arranged by the Tan supporters, the line of Verdun, the respected commander of the Great War, has met with Francois de Rouk, a heroic common soldier from the same conflict. While Bataan rose first to the position of Falk's right-hand man, De Rook became active in veterans groups, joining the right-wing Croix de Fou in 1927 and taking it over two years later, the same year that Bataan succeeded the late Falk as president since as president. Since then, De Rook has greatly expanded his organization from a vaguely nationalistic group for disgruntled old soldiers to a formidable political movement advocating for corporatist econo economics French nationalism, and a strong presidency. Perhaps predictably, the Croix de Fuel has been so far to support, has been so far glad to support the junta, gaining the votes of many of Bataan's sympathizers among the public, and has been vital in maintaining parliamentary support for the junta. 
although De La Rook now promises that he will continue to stand by Breton no matter what, he today suggested to the Marshal that appointing a new cabinet dominated by members of the Croix de Fuel with himself as Premier would go a long way to resolving the crisis. He is indeed correct. With open backing for De La Rook's newspaper, La Frambeau, his paramilitary dispose, and, and from his extensive support base, the Junta will surely, surely be able to move on from the crisis. Nonetheless, some allies are cautioning Baton that granting De La Rook's search influence may well lead to the end of the Junta, with De La Rook slowly displacing the Marshal, Marshal. And we, he'll stay loyal anyway, we don't need to give him so much power. We'll lose some base stability from this, so we're essentially refusing his demands, I think. I mean, the alternative was actually agreeing with him. Can we advance in Afghanistan yet? I say go for it. Push forward over one of the Afghan soldiers. And they are pretty strong, I would say. I mean, they were winning, I believe. Never mind, they aren't anymore. Time is running out. And what does it say here? Absolute coup in the white in White Ruthenia, which is like Belarus, having turned down his allies' over tours and with the protests ongoing, Patan is an increasingly difficult, well, increasingly difficult position. Although both De La Rook and Mar Marlin have promised that they will continue to stand by the junta, our refusal, our refusal to make many, what am I saying? Our refusal to make meaningful concessions to either men has certainly ensured that their support will be hardly vigor vigorous in the coming weeks. And with protesters going nowhere, this won't be enough. With this in mind, multiple allies of multiple allies of Baton, including both General de Gaulle and Admiral Garon, are now once again urging the marshal to declare martial law, arguing that civilian politics have led to this chaos and that it is time for us to move on it for, move on from it for good, if the junta is to live on and the metropolitan is to be retaken. However, however, others are urging us to make discreet overtures the various far-right leagues to see if their support will bolster our image and let's do this here and say we can legitimately we can do this legitimately if we gain the league support we'll get we'll lose 50 political power from that choice and that is what we did there in that event we're still advancing in afghanistan now just we got to fight against these militia never mind they're at peace their war is over and i suppose the the what is it the Fourth Anglo-Afghan War ends with status quo antebellum, or something like that. Having been, oh great, what is this? It says here we give him our backing. Do I want to have them do this? I'm considering my options here. Having been quietly, quietly contacted by associates of the president, Charles Maras. I don't know, this is some other guy. He leads the action Frances. And do I do get him backing? No. I'm not going to give him backing. I refuse. And now what will happen, I wonder. Not entirely sure. But let's move our troops from... Move them back to Algiers, that are these units that are in India. And I'm a little uncertain what's going to happen now that we... Now that we since we refused that guy... Oh, here we go. An offer from Danone. With political, in, with political instability ongoing and the rift between the junta and far right only increasing, something must be done. And it seems at last that we have a solution. The minor, but nonetheless increasingly popular far-right leader, Joseph Danon, who claims inspiration from the Romanian legionnaires, has approached Paton, Mares, and De Rook with a, with a proposal for a meeting of national pacification, chaired by himself. Describing his goal as the unity of the, far, the French right behind Paton, to strengthen and bring together the nation in preparation for the liberation, Danon believes that his relatively French position to the other men will let him position himself as a compromise candidate and a mediator between them, in spite, of his, in spite of his being significantly more radical than the others. Even if Darnon himself can find little goodwill among Patan's clique, most of the Marshal's advisors are urging that we take the opportunity to attempt to further, unlike, to further unite the nation. This time, they insist, is running out to resolve the crisis, and we must take this opportunity to find allies, and we need a united nation, let's arranged a meeting. We're going to get political power from this. Some stability and national populism as an ideology will simply become more popular. So that is done there. So Joseph Darnon is the guy we need to get into power. And here's some new infantry divisions. Give, him, give these to Army 10. Make more troops, please. How is resistance going? We need more guns. Need a lot more guns. We're having to deal with resistance constantly in West Africa, which is pretty annoying. And the meeting of national 
pacification, oh boy. King Edward tours the French national state. I mean, considering this event down here, I don't think that's the best time to tour the French national state, but you do you, Edward VIII. And the meeting of national pacification, Charles Maras and François de Rouruc, the two great rivals of the French right, faced each other uneasily from opposite sides of the table. Staring distractedly out the window of the presidential palace, de Rouruc looked down on the sprawl of Algiers below. Maras, meanwhile, gazed at the large presidential standard on the wall opposite, admiring the detail of Bataan's act symbol. The impending arrival of President Bataan himself, not to mention that of the upstart Danon, hardly reduced attention. In spite of their many differences, neither man could understand what Bataan saw in this deluded legionnaire, or how Danon could possibly think that he might stabilize the nation. But they had both needed to appear committed to national unity, and so they had both ostensibly arrived at the palace an hour before. The patter of footsteps began to resonate and from the corridor outside. Amaras and De Rouruk, alike them, braced themselves for long hours of argument, both knowing it would be in vain. They heard the doors open and what seemed like the president commenting to an aide, and then the bomb went off, and all the tension, all the rivalry, was swept away into fire and chaos. So Edward VIII is touring the French national state. Meanwhile, a bomb has gone off in the well, in the presidential palace while a bunch of members of the French right wing are present there. We'll lose some stability also. Research slot available. The savior of France, oh boy. And some war in China is over. Someone's elected to chairman anyway. The savior of France. In the aftermath of the presidential palace bombing, the entire nation administration fell into chaos. With Charles Maras and François de Rose de Rouque, Francis de Rouque both dead, their parties rapidly fell into chaos amidst infighting, and more importantly, total shock and abolishment, I mean astonishment, at what had happened. President Patton, for his part, was rushed to hospital in a critical condition, leaving him unable to maintain order while his allies squabbled among themselves. It was only Joseph Darnon who could offer the vision, determination, and strength needed to save France in his hour of need. The bomb having gone off mere minutes before he arrived at the palace, he was at the center of events from the start. His natural charisma soon allowed him to take charge of the efforts to maintain order, ensuring that the president could safely get to the hospital. Shortly afterwards, understanding the gravity of the situation how, and how thoroughly France had been betrayed by its politicians, he ordered his loyal militiamen to storm the assembly. With the whole administration thrown into chaos, the brave men faced no resistance, and it was not long before Danon addressed the nation over the radio, and a various plot he declared had unfolded. The Communards bank ruled and aided by, oh no, oh great, so, how to say this, Darnon has some people he doesn't like, and not only of Algiers, but of the entire world, and using Algerian nationalists as useful tools for them, had conspired to kill Baton, and just how close their plot had come to success, Darnon stated, only showed how complicity political, the political class was in this disgraceful plot, against France itself. The liberals in the seemingly, well, in the assembly, the other people, and what else, the, na the natives, every force opposed to the French race had come together this day, and it was through his leadership and the glory of France alone that they had failed. Only a radical, indeed revolutionary, reorganization of the French state, he announced, could save France from its foes. Shortly afterwards, having regained cons consciousness in the hospital, a, shark, a shaken Marshal Patton confirmed Darnon as premier. And now, the French national state is the Legionary Order of France, led by Joseph Darnon. And he has a big bio here. Besides that, though, also our, what is it, our national ideology, well, the ruling party of the country is now, it is national populism of the legionary, legionism, legionarism variety, which is, was started by the Iron Guard of Romania, so this is like a French version of the Iron Guard, I believe. Well, it's sort of inspired by it. But anyway, historically, Joseph Darnon, he was, well, he was a French soldier and collaborated with, collaborator with Germany during World War II. He served in the French army in both World War I and early World War II. After this, though, well, after France sort of got, in, well, they got defeated by Germany, he would go on to organize the creation of the Milice Francaise, which acted as the paramilitary for Vichy France, and the Milice 
Frances is like the it's just tra it translates to French militia and was just called militia also I believe that's not really important but I just wanted to say that and besides that he was also in the Waffen SS and he was executed after World War II ended for treason so that's who Joseph Darnon is as a person historically that's to give you some historical context for him as an individual and he is leading the French national state at this point which is just called the Legionary Order of France and we have we now have access to his path in particular here to like we can do these focuses the Praetorian Guard and Cole this and one thing about how to say this one thing about Darnon is that he dislikes he does not like Freemasons we'll say that at the very least I'll say that at the very least obviously I think it's a lot more it goes a lot more beyond not just liking them Legionnaires storm Algiers and today Joseph Darnon and his radical nationalist region his ne what am I saying and his radical nationalist legionary militias have occupied Algiers and forced the resignation of the government he didn't have baton under close armed guard appoint him as head of state and resign himself to internal exile now Darnon has total control over France and will undoubtedly lead it down a very different road Darnon intends to do everything he can to free his beloved country from the red traitors that is what he that is what they're seen as the commune of France is anyway for this La Maitre has announced a complete and total militarization of society the preservation and purity of the purity of the French people a violent conscription and the implementation of forced labor for natives as well as the return of Christ as our only guide through the state Catholicism and now that is Joseph Darnon's agenda essentially so We've lost our marshal. Well, Philippe Breton was the marshal, I think. Yeah, we only have one marshal now. A large army is done. Let's complete the focus in the Darnan, well, the Legionary Order part of the focus tree and complete the Praetorian Guard, get that focus done. The Praetorian Guard represents those who are most trusted by Legion leadership, especially Darnan himself. They shall be entrusted with both the personal security of our leaders, but also internal intelligence operations and the surveillance of potential subversives and we'll gain a national spirit from this which is it seems quite impressive and a lot of other decent things as well like political power we'll gain we'll get ourselves plus 20 political power plus five percent command power five percent base stability and 20 2500 manpower and where is the army are they back in they're not just yet what's this about this is something that can help with national populism so i guess i'll read it jacques bonville Jacques, Jacques Bainville, born in 1879, renowned historian, journalist, and one of the founders of Action Francois, gave Francais gave today a grand speech in an AF meeting in Algiers, born to a, oh great, whatever. I think it's just something just telling us about the leader of the Action Francais, which is not really relevant anymore now that Joseph Darnon has taken power over the French, well, the Legionary Order of France. I don't think the Action Francais, Action Francais would be that relevant anyway. As far as I know, I don't think they are in the political, the new political landscape of the country, since Joseph Darnon has his own dictatorship, apparently, well, legionary, whatever, he, whatever it's officially called, and the totalists take power in Italy, well, the Socialist Republic of Italy, they're led by Benito Mussolini, and how is our military doing? They're making their way to Algiers, well, the Army Group 1, they're returning from the Dominion of Delhi, so that war ended there. Fortunately, in our favor, Malta secures independence. And I will say this now, just as some, I guess, I don't know, Raj authority. What is going on? Interesting. So Winston Churchill's in charge of the Dominion of Delhi now. But I will say that I believe Afghanistan as a country, due to its, I don't know, it's how to say this, it's been nerfed by the developers of Kaiser Redux. I think that's what happened anyway. They used to win the war all the time, easily, for the for the when their fourth ang win the fourth anglo-afghan war all the time but they've been nerfed and there's a war in china and we're doing a focus now that will give us political power base war support and we'll lose 500 manpower and social liberalism social liberalism market liberalism well social liberals social liberalism and market liberalism will be less popular at this point russia plunges in the civil war that's going on but national populism will increase in popularity as an ideology and we will lose the widespread protest national spirit as a result of this focus. And Pius XII is elected to power in 
well in the Italian Federation. In the Italian Federation, I'm just going to say this now. Also, Joseph Darnon, if I recall right, he believes the how to say this. This new pope is part of a Freemason plot. So yeah, he's probably not. He's a super. Ca he's very, very Catholic. He just thinks the pope. It may be a Freemason plot. Something about relating the Freemasons, just like a false pope or something. That's just something he thinks. That focus is done, though. Now let's do Voice of the Militia. And it says here in the focus tree, well, this focus in particular, the French militias require both recruits and more devotion. We need to dominate public channels of information and communicate our inspiring message, message via radio and loudspeaker alike. With a single clear message being communicated by Danon's Legionary Order Service, helping unify other militia members under him. And from this, the popularity of national populism will go up. We'll get 15 political power, 15.5 command power, 4,000 manpower, 3% gain base, what am I saying? Gain 3% base war stability, and we'll get ourselves a national spirit called Militia State, which, judging by all the green numbers here, seems like it's quite good, honestly. And that is a 35 day long focus. And once we get done with all of this build up here, we will find ourselves declaring war on the Commune of France, ultimately, as the goal of the Legionary Order of France is to get back to Paris, essentially. Just re return home, return to the homeland. It's the same thing the Kingdom of Canada is on about, except for them, instead of France, it's returning to Britain. The Kingdom of Canada wants to put the Windsors back in power, essentially. And what are they doing? They send some volunteers. Oh, they send volunteers to the second volunteer army. That is interesting. So there's Canadians fighting in the Russian Civil War. Well, the second Russian Civil War, I think? Whatever, they're there. And Poland elects a new king. It is, oh, the PS guy. Construction one. Modify officer core. What can we do? Actually, no. Conserve political power for now. Go to the research slots, though, here. And let's start doing excavation one. Get that done now. And I gotta research radio, probably. No template. What am I making no template for? Toad artillery. I need to fix that. Action Algerian, what does it say here? Founded in 1920s. And, okay, is this like Algerian? Is it like Action Francais for, but for Algeria? Maybe? I Perhaps, I don't know. That's what that event is. No template. Let's go get, what does it say now? Fit the Federation. And this is something that gives us political power. I think this is just some national holiday, I believe. I could be wrong but it is something that gives us political power. And I apologize for not reading some other events because I don't know if they're specifically, I don't know if those ones about Action France and Action Algerian are exclusive to Danon's path. They seem to me like they're just opening, they're just, it, how to say this, they just seem to explain political parties to me. I don't know if they're, I don't know, but whatever. In the focus tree, let's do dominate capitalism. Capitalist, internationalism, materialism, and greed have long sought to subvert our nation. And okay, with their businesses, while their businesses already rely on state protection, we will directly manage all international finance and trade, only only approving of that which is required for the invasion of the commune, while directly managing in industries that will now have legion members overseeing overseeing capitalist owners direct, directly. And from this focus, we'll get 4% base stability, 15 political power, one civilian factory in Corsica, and a building sought in Algiers, and some kind of national sphere called Legion Capitalism, which will make, how to say, it will make building civilian factories slower while making military factories easier to build. The rise of the Socialist Anti-Colonial Committee. So it, it appears that the Commune of France is, open, is up to something relating to foreign policy, and now... Modified government, Wallonia join, joined the Reichs Pact. That happened, military staff. Actually, no, civilian economy. Let's go to, no, what do we do? Let's go to early mobilization. Let's do that now. Available planes and reserves. Let me check on my Air Force. We have 50, well, we have like 25 planes each. Netherlands joined the Reichs Pact. That's pretty good. They're pretty, I mean, they're relatively strong, so that's a big thing for the Reichs Pact, maybe. Although that said, the Reichspack has Royalist Siam is having a civil war. 
the Reichspact is a pretty large faction, so Netherlands and Wallonia joining it is just a cherry on top, frank frankly. And I guess Flanders... Netherlands joined the Reichspact because they got Flanders as a puppet, I assume. Wallonia, they're in the Reichspact. Well, yeah, obviously. Georgia joined the Reichspact. Pretty strong Reichspact in this playthrough, it seems. And how's the Russian Civil War going? The Second Volunteer Army is the only faction opposing the Russian Socialist Republic left, of, left alive. Mau Mau, some event there. Available planes in reserve. Don't worry about that for now. I'm just going to get rid of that notification. No template for artillery. We can change that. Give these guys artillery. That's what we'll do. We need more artillery, though. Probably. And I need just more military factories. I do. Dominate capitalism will be done shortly. That was someone who was elected governor of Bohemia. Now let's complete the focus. Ultranational Catholicism. The values of France are those... Let me read this. The values of France are those of an uncom uncompromising Christian faith that warriors do not shy away from if they are to wage a war on the chaos and radical materialism destroying this earth. We must embrace our own national Catholicism and the French race as incontrovertibly linked, promoting legion-friendly priests within the church and demanding endorsement of our values from the papacy alongside according funds. They must denounce those supposed Christians who help destroy true Catholicism in France, such as the, well, some Austrians, who must now be called into a crusade against our foes unless, unless they wish to be destroyed next. And from this focus, we'll get 25 political power, 2,000 manpower, gain 5% base war stability, I mean base war support, national populism will become more popular, and we'll get a national spirit referred to as legionary idealism. And, beside, well, what it basically does, it gives us a bunch of buffs, it, well, except for the fact it causes us to lose 10, minus 10% 10 local non-core manpower. So that's what this focus does, ultra-national Catholicism. It will take 35 days to do. And we now have, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, about 11 focuses before we can start the war with the French Commune. And I think that war will take place sometime in 1937. We'll have to get ready for that in the meantime. I want to at least have about 24 divisions before we attack anyone. I may just wait to attack them. Bef well, I may just wait for the Germans to go to war with the French commune before I do anything. Because honestly, even with everything, I don't know, they just outnumber us. The Entente is heavily outnumbered in terms of divisions between the French, the commune of France, and the Union of Britain. Move this division here to Algiers with the First Army. Keep making new divisions. Manpower, the invitation to the IEDC, join and advance, invest 100 political power. Yes, we'll do this. This is some research thing. The, what is it called? The Imperial Economic Development Council. And it is relating to, the, relating to research stuff. Somebody declared, well, Jabal Shamar declared war Nijd in Arabia. That is going on. And there was someone, great IEDC advisors. There's so much stuff here. Humanist integralism. I'm just gonna have to close that out. But I gotta choose some stuff here. IEDC investment, arms factories, get an off map, military factory, IEDC advisors, please help us out with say how what do we need here? I need construction engineers to give us faster construction speed for 365 days. And that is done now. I am Want to get some buffs? Well, we now have a buff to construction speed, at least for a year. I think how the IEDC works, at some point every year you have to decide if you want to give up a certain amount of political power at a maximum of 100 to get some buffs for your country. I believe that's how it works. I could be wrong. And let's speed things up now, fastest speed possible. Unassigned division here. Army 12 is, Army 1 is growing. Growing, it has 12 divisions at this point. And why? What the world? Okay, that makes sense, I suppose. So, ultranational Catholicism is done. And now, in a focus tree, let's do underworld connections. In Nice and Corsica, there remain members of the Malu who oppose the syndicalist revolution and who remain on good terms with the Dernan's legion. The Praetorians will tighten connections with them for men, supplies, and most importantly, information. And from this focus. Once it's done, we'll get 20 political power, 500 manpower, 
one naval research well a research bonus for naval doctrine. 600 units of infantry equipment will be added to the national stockpile, and we'll get a national spirit called Underworld Connection. So we're getting a lot of national spirits throughout this focus, while well, this part of the focus tree for the for Darnon and the Legionary Order, essentially. Which there's not a lack of those at all. Tons and tons of national spirits thus far. How many more will we get? Say, let me check here. Let me see. I think it just modified the existing ones. I believe that's what it does. Okay, yeah. The rest of these focuses either give us other things or things we're just going to get buffs on pre existing focuses, which is interesting. And I suppose I'm going to end what is going well, what is part one of my, how to say, French National State Legionary Order playthrough in Kaiser Redux here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can check out Kaiser Redux in the video description. The link to the mod is there.